Welcome everybody to the latest installment of the U.S. Impact Presidential Dialogue Series. Today we are with a representative of the presidential campaign of Martin O'Malley, who of course is the former Democratic Governor of Maryland, former Mayor of Maryland, been active for a long time. I think uh, he was actually involved in 1988 presidential elections, but very hard as a staff member. And uh, you know, today we are joined by a very senior representative of the campaign, Ms. Karine Jean-Pierre. Uh, Karine, thanks for, thanks for uh, joining us. Hi, everyone. It's a very exciting to be on. Thank you so much for having me. I, I got to tell you, I've never done Google Hangout, so uh, learning everything, something new every day, which is exciting. Um, but yes, yeah, so my name is uh, Karine uh, Manish. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, my name is Karine Jean Pierre. I am the deputy campaign manager for political and field um, for the campaign. I've been with the O'Malley campaign. Hack um, in in I think April or May, and then just kind of rolled into the campaign into this position. Um, uh, just to give you a little bit about my for the last 15, 20 years, um, my last uh, presidential campaign. I actually was on, in the White House with uh, President Obama, worked in his uh, political affairs shop, and then did the 2008 campaign, lived out in Chicago. Uh, so I've done a uh, national presidential world for some time, uh, but uh, started, uh, started all of this in New York City doing local politics, and then kind of branched out into the national world. Uh, me, I'm looking forward to this uh, conversation. I love talking about Martin O'Malley, especially since he's my boss and uh, he's the one that I, I chose to um, chose to work for uh, this time around this cycle um, for many many reasons. A lot of it is for his progressive view, views, for his executive experience, um, and um, and I've gotten to know him when I was at the White House. I got to know him and he really believed that he would be a great president. President about matter um, that matter to to everyday people. Um, just what he did uh, on immigration reform, I thought was pretty amazing. Um, how he really up uh, and elevated education and made that a priority when he was governor. Um, and so I think uh, those things are 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 what we need to to lead our country forward. You know, there the I think at, at someone who worked on President Obama's uh, two. So worked in the White House. Uh, what I'm looking for, and what I was looking for, and I, I, I have, I believe, is someone who can continue what Obama did and take us take us forward. Right? We talk about uh, the governor talks about a lot about new leadership, and um, and I think we need we need that. We need someone who's going to take us forward, not not backward, not back to the old, but forward vision and pushing uh, the agendas. Um, the progressive agendas that he has actually executed, uh, all the actions that he's actually done, um, but also where you know we're taking it further where uh, Obama left it. So, have, uh, questions from the community, and before we get into those, I just want to talk a little bit about U.S. Impact, and uh, you know we are a bipartisan organization representing three million Indian Americans throughout the country. We've been around for over a decade, and in fact, we've engaged with both president, with, Dem with Democratic and Republican presidential candidates since 2004. So we're active in 2004 election, 2008, 2012, and now again in 2016. Uh, you know what we're doing is engaging with these candidates to talk about issues important to the Indian American community, and for our audience out there, as many of you know, one of the many reasons why presidential campaigns reach out to us is. Even though we're three, we're three million Indian Americans throughout the country, we have a strong and strategic representation in several of the early caucus and primary states, and also several of the swing states. Uh, and these numbers are from 2010, so these are old, and they've surely increased. But in Iowa, which has the first caucus, we have over 11,000 as of 2010, uh, including Indian Americans who have run for state and federal office and who have won at the state office level. In New Hampshire, we have uh, close to 10,000 uh, as of 2010, and, and that's surely increased. And again, we have candidates who have run for state level and, and who have won. South Carolina, about 16,000. Nevada, almost 12,000. Ohio, 64,000. Uh, Florida, 128,000. List those numbers out to show that, and especially in a close presidential election where every state's electoral votes count and every 
That's right. Election That's right. within the state is important. And we're able to make a difference. So uh, thank you for joining us, and thanks for being uh, a part of our dialogue series. And I'd like to go into questions. And our first question is actually from the chairman and the founder of US Impact, Mr. Sanjay Puri, who's in Washington, D.C. Oh, great. So actually, uh, Sanjay, we'll have, uh, we might have to increase his volume a little bit. Actually, I'm going to step in and, and ask Sanjay's first question, if you don't mind. Uh, and it's going to be, it's actually a business question. And I, I, it's about small businesses mostly, because many Americans are entrepreneurs, including it's been for several years now, uh, 15, it's been a consistent percentage for several years now where about 15%, if not more, of startups in Silicon Valley are actually Indian American owned. And, uh, you know, that's, that's startups, that's, we have executive level positions at, at mid-sized, large companies, a variety of industries. We wanted to discuss how a Martin O'Malley would affect entrepreneurs and small business owners. Yeah, and I think uh, yeah, I, was, uh, I, was, I was saying earlier. I was saying earlier. Was, I got a turn. I got a turn. Getting really bad. Really bad. Can you guys hear me okay? Hello. Uh, yep. Can you hear us? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. So as I was saying before, um, first of all, I just want to tell everybody. Look, I come from. I I have a. Um, I am. Um, a new American, I'd like to say, is, is what we like to say on the campaign. I, I come from a, a Haitian background, and my, you know, both my parents are, are from Haiti, and I came here when I was about six or seven years old. And so, um, you know, I think what you guys are doing and what you're, what you guys are talking about is, is I totally understand. I come from, I come from, you know, I come from my family background. Uh, it sounds, it resonates with me. Um, and so, um, so I, 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 you know, I, uh, I'm. It's amazing what you guys have done as a community with this pack and how you're pushing forward your community in a very positive light. And um, it's, uh, it's really, it's really great to see. Um, so, uh, so once again, thank you for for having me on. So when when um, O'Malley was uh, governor in his administration, he launched some bold some bold um, plans to bring new high paying jobs to Maryland. In biotech and cybersecurity, establishing Maryland's leadership in the nation for innovation and entrepreneurship. So he has; he's been a leader on that, and um, and understands how important it is for small business. So under this leadership, Maryland was the, the top state for economic security um, for women, with large percentage of women-owned businesses than in any other state in America. Uh, he was forward-looking; had a forward-looking approach to business and entrepreneurship, including recognizing climate change, um, which he sees as a, as a, as a huge uh, way forward um, to really creating jobs. The plan that we put forward with climate change uh, could create five million jobs. Um, so, um, so this has been something that he, he's been a leader in as governor. He has had forward uh, looking um, uh, plan on all of this. Um, and he, believe, he believes in civic tech pitch competition during campaign and engaging young uh, innovators and continue to, to do so as president, which he did um, as governor. So this is something that has been front and center, and he's actually done it. You know, once again, actions, not words, as we've been saying on our campaign. Um, things that he's done as governor that he'll do as president. So climate change is a business opportunity. I know you mentioned that. Lisa. Could you explain yeah, on that? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, under under our our climate change plan, um, he believes that you know by having by do, by um, by doing a different way of um, looking, you know, building solar panels and and um, doing those types of things, you can actually create uh, five million jobs. Um, it's like the, we call it the clean energy future, um, and he talks about it a lot um, on the campaign trail. Um, so it's just a uh, yeah, it's uh, it's just a way to have transition to clean renewable energy, as we know. We've talked about that, um, you know, and and our reliance on fuel energy and how doing these things, how when you create uh, a way to to have clean 
clean energy, you also are creating jobs as well. So it's it's all connected, um, and employment. So it's a, yeah, it's a big priority of his um, that he talks about. And by 2015, you know, um, being being independent. Okay, and so our next question comes from Roger Santhala of the state of Indiana uh, and is actually about just like so many Indian Americans are business owners, there are also many Indian Americans who are physicians. So, Roger, uh, are you there? Yeah, Manish, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Absolutely. Okay, thank you, Karina. We also have a lot of Haiti population uh, uh, people from Achille. We have a Indian Indiana Haiti Association in Indianapolis. Oh, wow. So, um, so I represent the U.S. Impact uh, chap chapter Indiana. We have a lot of people involved here. Uh, we have a new mayor who is also Democrat. So, uh, I work in a you know healthcare industry. I am a speech language pathologist. My wife is a geriatric psychiatrist. So, a lot of uh, Indians also. Many Indians, Americans. Um, our physicians are in the healthcare industry, at least 10% uh, of the uh, physician in the U.S. Mm -hmm. So I would like to ask you um, a question. Uh, please discuss how uh, Governor Omali's presidency would affect the healthcare industry, including with uh, respect to medical practice, because that's where the lot of uh, most uh, a certain percentage of the budget goes to the uh, malpractice insurance, and which has been a heavy, heavy on uh, uh, small practices. So I would like to ask you and see and also be all in favor of caps on uh, medical practice liability. Yeah, and uh, look, I totally have, as I mentioned, you know, I was part of the administration's the first two years and, you know, ACA was a big part of uh, what we pushed forward and, and tried to uh, you know, tried to get into law, um, Affordable Care Act um, under President Obama. So the governor has put together a full health care proposal, which is on the website, um, www.martinomalley.com. And one of the things that he truly believes in is that, you know, the, the president has taken, a, has taken us, you know, to, to a point where we have ACA, ACA we have, you know, affordable health care, but he, it still needs to go a little further. So he definitely um, wants to build on what um, Obama has done. And uh, and so he'll you know his plan is as president he'll he's looking he's looking to to do that um, and there's you know and there are, I think there's a lot there's a lot to talk about right there's a lot of things that we we need to do um, finding an innovation innovative way in paying for healthcare and it's gonna it's gonna take a lot of work um, part of that we he, he's talked about encourage states to adopt comprehensive payment reform improve the value of Medicare which is as we know really important increased support of primary care. Um, another thing is use transparency and fair competition to make care more affordable, uh, require uh, clarity in healthcare billing and fairness for the uninsured, um, enforce antitrust law to encounter dramatic price increases. So there's, there's a lot to discuss. Um, fight against corporate tax inversions, um, as, you know, as it could be really expensive, especially with the pharmaceutical end of things. Um, um, ban uh, price gouging for prescription drugs. Um, so there's a, he has a lot in this plan that talks about, and also using using uh, reducing waste by using um, by empowering patients to to use data and technology. So there's a lot of things that he's proposed in his plan and in his vision, and a lot of it is building from where we are with ACA and making it you know taking it to the next level, um, you know making it better. Um, uh, you know, uh, one of the things that he's talking about is increasing uh, the rate of insur of insurance rate uh, to 95 percent by 2020. Um, so, uh, like I said, it's building on affordable uh, affordable care act to expand affordable coverage to more Americans. And so that's the, those are the things that he's really he's talked about. And I think there's a lot more to there's a lot more work to be done, and he knows that. And so, like I said, we put together a, a health care plan, and it's in, it's pretty detailed, and so we can. I, I'm happy to talk about it offline or at another time in more detail, even bring on our policy person uh, to discuss it. 
Thank you. Actually, it's interesting that you mentioned about uh, tax aversion specifically for the pharmaceutical industry because we have a question from a member of ours that came through. He's actually uh, uh, an executive uh, in, with a very large pharmaceutical company that's in the U.S. and, and abroad, and uh, he actually was asking specifically about that issue. Mm -hmm. He wanted to know, what are your thoughts on promoting pharmaceutical innovation and research and development in the U.S. so that, among other benefits, uh, pharmaceutical companies may be may not take advantage of tax aversion uh, policies that other countries might have, and uh, instead of shifting their company headquarters to other countries uh, that might have a more favorable tax structure. Yeah, so I think, so one of the things that, you know, the governor has talked about is making sure that, you know, things don't, things stay, things don't, don't get shipped out, um, and that we do have, uh, we give folks more of an opportunity here. Um, and so, you know, I think, I think, um, you know, one of the things he's talked about is fighting, you know, fight the legislation, um, like stopping corporate inversions act, uh, to close loopholes in companies to use game that to, to use to, that used to game the tax code and avoid paying U.S. taxes. So that is something that he's he's talked about. Um, you know, ban price gouging for prescription drugs. Um, you know, stop stop the gouge just like we stop the gouging of of gases uh, during fuel shortages. You know, it's like we shouldn't be doing the same with drugs. Um, so those those are the things um, those are the things that he has talked about along those lines. So we're going to shift from uh, some domestic issues to uh, a couple of foreign policy questions that we have from Sanjay Puri, who is our chairman and uh, and founder of our group in Washington D.C. Sanjay. Still having a little bit of technical issues with. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> All right, he just give us? five seconds to. Oh, he took off his headphones. <laughs> that might work. Then maybe that works. And let's see. Well, you know, what? I will actually, I'll actually ask this next one. It is, um, it, so it's a foreign policy question, and you know. India served as a role model in the world for having the second largest population of Muslims uh, yep. and lived relatively peacefully in a yep. very tough neighborhood. You know, we have Afghanistan, Pakistan, Bangladesh, and they have their internal challenges uh, that are very well known, uh, you know, especially with regard to uh, terrorism issues that, that come within each of those countries and that have been exported in other countries as well. Uh, you know, what are your thoughts on the role of India and the U.S. can play together in combating well, terrorism throughout the world, and yeah. um, specifically terror groups like like ISIS? Yep, yep. Um, so, as mayor, the you know the go governor O'Malley met with two dozen heads of state. He discussed uh, as mayor and governor. He did that, and he does. Okay. He he discussed the Israeli-Palestinian conflict with a Israeli. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and data-driven government and Indian, with Indian, sorry, with Indian Prime Minister um, Modi, um, and so he's he's definitely had that experience and has um, definitely talked to heads heads of states and and um, had in, you know in-depth conversations. So as as governor, he's ha he's had he's been able to sit down with them. Um, you know, when it comes to ISIL, ISIS, you know. Defeating ISIL, ISIS requires our military strength and diplomatic sparks. He definitely says he definitely has said this, and that the debate and many debates and wherever he travels, like this is very important to do, and he supports the president um, in in his efforts to do that. Um, look, we need to contain and degrade um, ISIL. Uh, we need to work with our partners on the front lines. Uh, we need to cut off their funding. We need to stop their propaganda. We need to have. We need to have to. We need to ensure that Iraqi government governs in inclusively. So those are the things that he's talked about. Uh, this includes working with allies on the ground and improving human intelligence. So, um, so yeah. So these are the things that the governor has talked about on the trail. You've, you've, you've heard him say this at the debates, the most recent debate in South Carolina. Um, so he definitely thinks it's very important. Um, and has you know has has talked about it. Nice. And a follow-up question is that is that uh, in recent weeks, actually, the Prime Minister of Modi, who uh, the governor has actually met in person and discussed these yep. issues with. Yeah. Uh, so he actually made a 
surprise visit to, to Pakistan yep. uh, to thaw relations, and he you know, met with leaders there. Uh, it was very unexpected, was not publicized in advance. Yeah, uh, what are your views on that trip, uh, as well as the challenges that face the U.S. and the world from Pakistan, and, and how U.S. and your relations would move forward on a Martin O'Malley presidency? I, I know you touched on that a little bit just now, uh, but yeah. just want to follow up. Look, you know, the governor served on uh, the Council of Governors co-chair for defense and homeland security. He's talked about he talked about that also on, on the recent debate. Um, you know, working with he by doing this, he was working with U.S. secretaries of defense and homeland security to defend our, our country, our nation. Uh, he also served as co-chair of the National Governors Association Committee on Homeland Security and served as a U.S. Homeland Security Advisor Council. So he's definitely, I think. One of the things that he always says as governor, it's like you do have you have to protect, right? You have to protect the state, and so you get to to have these opportunities, you know, as well to to sit on these types of council and have these real conversation because it's really it's it's real, right? It's a very it's a it's it's these things happen, and you need to be able to understand how are you how are you going to protect the people that you represent. Um, so he understands with that, with because of those experiences, because of those opportunities, he understands that our nation's values have made us different um, and an inspiration to people around the world. Um, he understands the kind of leadership that helps this nation benefit from change and not becoming victim to it. Um, and so I, I believe as president, he's going to bring people together as he always does, especially when it comes to difficult issues. He's managed to bring people both sides of the, of the aisle, come together, and solve that large global problems um, that we face. So that those are the things that he's talked about. That's really interesting to have discussions with heads of state about these issues. Yeah, yeah it's pretty exactly wide range. Right. Yeah, no. Economic policy, and also now, yeah, foreign policy. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And so, our next question is from uh, Mr. Vic Johan, who uh, is from Washington D.C., and it's a uh, it's about immigration. Vic, are you no. there? Yes. Uh, can you hear me, Manish? Yes, we can. Oh, great. Thanks, uh, Manish. Thanks, Karin. Uh, interesting uh, uh, about Governor Malley about. Uh, uh, international affairs. Uh, so I'd like to just follow up on something that you said. Yeah, you did say he met. He knows Mr. Modi, and he did meet with Mr. Modi. Now, Mr. Modi, and uh, we know about uh, the U.S.-Israeli uh, relationship. But uh, I'd like to know what uh, you know. What do you think about uh, President Malley's, uh, O'Malley's? Uh, relationship versus in the Afghanistan Pakistan area especially in the India Pakistan uh, uh, let's call it relationship that's a very good question um, so I I'm trying to remember um, uh, I'm trying to remember if he's if he if he's met with the head you know what I don't I, I'm actually not a hundred percent sure I'm trying to remember what he said about that. Um, I know that he's met with several heads of states in the past several years, um, and I know he's done some trips out to the Middle East. I actually, I would have to follow up on that just because I don't want to say the wrong thing. I just want to no, make no. sure. I it's basically, uh, you know, like Iran is a uh, source of like so is Pakistan in the whole context, mm -hmm. and uh, the whole. Uh, India Pakistan and the US Pakistan India relationship kind of thing. So, what does he have to say about? And this is related to Afghanistan and Al Qaeda and others. No, I totally, I totally hear you. Um, I honestly would have to. I, foreign policy is not my is not my forte. Sure. So I would okay. Back to you on that one. Uh, but it's a very good question. I would have. I would literally would have to get back to you on that. On that about that. Okay. So let me follow up another one about. Uh, you know. About the immigration policies, uh, yeah. we've heard a lot about uh, Donald uh, uh, and his wall, and you know, yeah. about things like the Muslims. And so, what does uh, President O'Malley's uh, immigration policies look like? So, I have to say, I mean, one of the things that uh, one of the things that the the O'Malley has been called as a pro-immigrant candidate. You know, he is. Uh, 
he, his immigration uh, policy has been seen as the most progressive um, by a lot of um, you know immigration groups, the most progressive and the most forward-thinking immigration plan. And um, you know, the, the thing that I love that the governor he says this all the time, which is you know the United States is the enduring symbol of our nation is the enduring symbol of our nation is the Statue of Liberty, not the barbed wire fence. Um, and he and if you, you saw the last uh, debate, he was the first candidate to mention immigration. They didn't even it wasn't even a topic. Um, he had he mentioned it when they asked him, "Hey, what are the things that you feel like wasn't covered that you want to talk about?" He he the first thing he mentioned was immigration. Um, he was the first. Uh, he, you know, he. Uh, sorry, he as governor, he welcomed refugee children from Central America. He passed driver's license for new Americans, and um, and Maryland in Maryland, and the Dream Act as well in Maryland. He called for TPS for for those uh, currently fleeing, and the end of detention centers. Uh, he had dinner with DAPA family on the trail in Texas most recently. He stood with Dreamers outside the Sheriff's Joe's detention center in Arizona. Um, he, you know, his his goal is to bring those 11 million uh, new Americans out of the shadows. Um, and if we, we if we bring those new Americans into into our system, then we talk about when you talk about lifting the economy. You, it's part of that is bringing in those new Americans and taking them out of the shadow and bring making them part of this country. And that's how you that's how you help our economy. Um, he talks about that. Um, you know, this is, uh, these are all the things um, that uh, he truly, truly believes. Um, and so, you know, he visited a mosque, uh, was the first, first presidential candidate to do that, um, and to talk about, you know, what the horrible things that the Republicans were saying about Muslims, about immigrants, um, about Mexicans. And so um, I think he's had, I think he's had the strongest voice out of all the Democratic candidates um, on this issue and has been has been hailed um, by folks in the Muslim, Muslim community, folks in the Hispanic Latino community um, um, as being someone who has had a strong voice and someone that they would love to see as their president. So when it comes to immigration, I, 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 there is no other candidate out there who has a stronger uh, stronger values, a stronger record, and has a vision forward on how to, how, how to take the how to take the country forward when it comes to immigration. Strong emphasis on education, and uh, we we're wondering how uh, Martin O'Malley presidency would affect issues with respect to education. Yeah, so this is I, this education is um, is something that the governor. It's one. I, it's one of his records that I think, and in, in, he's had a lot of strong issues that he's uh, that he's had a great record on. But education, I think, is one of the strongest. Um, you know, uh, Maryland under his reign as governor, uh, Maryland public schools were 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 number one in a row for five years. Um, and he did this uh, while investing in Maryland education and not and not raising costs. Um, so if uh, and I've met some of these students um, when we launched a campaign I've met a couple of students who really benefited from what the governor did because if he had not if he did not freeze um, the tuition some of them would never have been able um, to return to school and uh, or to continue school uh, this young, one young lady her unfortunately her father had died and he was helping her with her education. And if, he, if that had not happened, if Governor Malley had not done that, um, she would not have been able to, to get her, her undergrad degree and also and then finish to get her master's degree. And, um, and, uh, and so it was, it was something that he was able to do during the recession, during the worst time, you know, when people are, are, taxing, um, uh, are taxing folks. Um, he, was, he froze that. Um, uh, so that was that was really important. Um, two of his daughters uh, who graduated college, one of them, his eldest daughter, is a, is a teacher, um, which is uh, which you know we see that he's, just, that he's very proud of. He's put together a debt-free a debt-free college plan um, so that when students get out of 
uh, get out of college. They don't have this, the, the, not just the students, but the family doesn't have this debt that's following them around for 20 years and that he believes the government needs to play a bigger role so that doesn't happen. Um, because when you when when that happens, you lose a lot of it's like a brain drain. You lose a lot of these young smart people into I mean that the corporate there's anything wrong with corporate America, but that's what they have to do in order to to pay um, to to pay their their loans when they could you know when they don't have to worry about that they can give back and do public service uh, work and not have to have to worry about loans. Um, so this is something that he is. Uh, he has a very strong record on. I, you know, I've talked about immigration education is another one, very very strong record, and he 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 really knows how to. He brought both both sides of the aisle together to really make education possible um, for for people in, in in the state. Great. Well, thank you. Um, and actually, our next question is from Raju in Indiana, uh, who's wondering about kind of what separates uh, your campaign and your candidate from the others. Raju? Yep. Oh, oh, that's a question. Okay. Um, yeah, so... Yes. Yeah, that's, uh, that's <laughs> what Raju and So I think, I think for, you know, I think, um, and I, I asked that, that question for myself when I came to, when I decided on which campaign I was going to work with and why. And I'm, I'm a huge believer in being passionate and believe in who you're working for uh, because, you know, it's, it's very, very important, especially when you think about the future of this country, when you think about your kids and what your kids are going to be left with. And, um, you know, I mean, plain and simple, the governor has 15 years of executive experience. And as we all know, being president of the United States, having executive experience is very, very important. He has both ideas. He's a new leader, which I've mentioned earlier on in the conversation. Um, and he, he knows how to be a progressive. He has a record. He knows how to bring bold ideas and get it done. Um, and I think he can build on the Obama legacy, which is really, really important. We need, we need when I say leadership, we need someone who, to come in and take and, and do what the, what the president has done and move us forward. And also, he's not a product of Washington. You know, he's a governor. Governors know how to lead. They are executive. They know how to be executive. Um, and he's not. He's never been part of the of the Washington back and fight and what's happened and not being able to get anything done. He actually knows how to do that. And I think when you, when you look at the other two candidates, while I respect both candidates, I think that's a that's a big difference. You know, that is a big. That is very very important. And. Um, and should be, you know, should be analyzed and really looked at in a thoughtful way because it matters. I think it truly, truly matters. So that's interesting. That's a you let off saying that's why you, know, you ask yourself that question: what separates him from the yeah. others? And, and the answer to that is why you get involved. Uh, what about in, in you know, USMPIC has uh, plugged in volunteers to help out uh, in current campaigns and and past ones also for past presidential. Yeah, well, those who, oh, so USMPEC has, has helped volunteers get involved with presidential campaigns both in 2016, the current yes. election, and prior ones as well. And so, you know, for those listening, uh, how would they how would they get involved? What opportunities are they? Where are they? How do they find out about it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That that'd be. Oh, we would love that. So the number one num number one way to, to be involved and to help us out is in Iowa. The Iowa caucus is two weeks from yes was going to be two weeks from yesterday, February first. Um, it's a the Iowa caucus is a very fun process. Um, it's 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 you know it's the first it's the it's the first of uh, of, uh, of of the for the primary election. You gotta get you gotta get through Iowa, and we've seen historically for in the Democratic presidential primary, if you win Iowa, you pretty much you know pretty much are on your way to being uh, to being the, the presidential nominee on the Democratic side. So Iowa has a strong strong importance. Um, and so we, we feel that we're going to have some surprises that night. We're going to shock everyone. We're going to surprise everyone. So people want to people want to come out. Uh, that's a great place to go. Uh, to go to Iowa. It's a great experience. It's uh, learning how to caucus and getting out there and 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 seeing how that all works is pretty insane and fun. Um, and there's New Hampshire thereafter. Um, New Hampshire's the primary. Um, 
uh, it will be the first primary in the four important early contests. And so that's a, another way to, to come out to New Hampshire and be helpful there. Um, and that's, for us, that's if you want to volunteer, if you can, if you can afford it, if you want to, or you just want the experience, and, uh, or you have family there and you want to come out and just uh, see how it, all, how it all happens, how the magic happens, it's getting, you know, getting people out there in the states and helping our staff on the staff, on the, on, in this, on, in the, on the ground, and uh, getting the governor the win that we need. Okay. Are you watching okay. yourself this morning or this afternoon? Uh, we also were wondering um, uh, a couple other questions that we had, just kind of following up on the immigration uh, and small business uh, items that we were talking about earlier. Uh, first off, when you talk about immigration, you mentioned the DREAM Act, and uh, I believe the, the DREAM Act in, in Maryland, and I believe that Martin O'Malley was heavily involved in getting that bill passed in Maryland. The, the DREAM yeah. Act was a federal yeah. bill, and then... Yep, yep, and then and then he fought it on the on the ballot. Like he put money behind it to make sure that it it you know it uh, he was a, it was he was a, it was able to make it you know make it make it through the ballot. Yeah, this is the, when 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 we talk about immigration, he not only did he make it happen, um, you know, push the bill and make it happen legislatively. He actually raised money to make these things happen as well. Um, so yeah, so so most most definitely, he's had he's had a very progressive um, progressive view, um, just a progressive record on this um, um, for being in Maryland, south of the Eastern you know, line, and getting these types of things done uh, ahead of other states. Uh, some states have not even gotten this type of stuff done. Um, I think it's very impressive. It's extremely impressive, especially at the time. You got to remember, um, in 2009, 2010, there was the crazy Tea Party happening. Um, it was there was a recession. It was so much more difficult to get these types of progressive agendas done. And he was able to bring both sides of the aisle together. And he got pushback from his own folks in the party. You know, so it's all very, you know, that I mean, that's the reality. And this is why this is why I work with the man because he knows how to get things done and he has a true record, you know. That's excellent. I think it's important for our uh, our audience to know that you know the Dream Act, the acronym is uh, Development Relief and Education for Alien Minors. And what's really unique about you know, your uh, governor's actions is that he actually, uh, you know, that, that's typically a federal issue, immigration, and he was able to, as a governor. Uh, able to push that even though you know, governors don't really have that ability. So that was very, very interesting that he focused on that. Uh, what about um, you know, H-1B visas? And uh, there's been a lot of debate about that and the effectiveness and, and how many should be actually issued and whether they should be issued to whom. Uh, do you have any comments or does the campaign have any policies on the H-1B visa program and where sees it now, where sees it going? I don't think we've talked about that um, in detail. To be quite honest with you, um, I would have to I would have to come back on that one. I, I've not we've not we've not talked about that one. Oh, I can't hear you. Extensively. Yeah. I'm sorry. Oh. I didn't hear that. Oh, could you can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Oh, great. Yeah. Right. You know we've discussed uh, immigration extensively, so of course we'll come back as a part of some other policy. Um, so I think mean, that's that's actually really helpful. Do you have any kind of any statements or things that you'd like to in your campaign and you know, yeah. well, sort of getting involved in Iowa and, and why they should maybe support you? But, um, thank you so much for, for the opportunity to talk to all of you. We really appreciate this time. And um, I really hope that you guys take this. I know you guys are nonpartisan. I um, totally understand that you're a PAC. Um, but I, you know, individually, I hope everyone just takes a look at all the candidates and, and, um, and, um, you know, really examine what's important to you, um, and who, and look at who's actually gotten things done. You know, who's not just about 
who's not just about talking, who's actually, you know, we talk about actions, not words, you know. Uh, we just don't say things or talk about things that we could potentially do. The governor actually has gotten them done. And, um, you know, the, that's I think that's really important in, in this type of political uh, climate that we're in, uh, where um, you know we see what's going on on the Republican side, it's very scary. Um, it's very discouraging. Um, I think it's very disenfranchising too. Um, I think that we need a leader that can um, that can really push us forward and not stop. And I think Governor O'Malley is that person. Um, you know, when my friends and my families ask me, uh, you know, to, to tell them about Governor O'Malley, and I'm like, he's a real deal. He is the actual real deal. Um, and I've worked for many, many elected officials. I've worked for many politicians, and he's by far one of my favorites. Um, you know, I enjoy talking to him, listening to him, and um, and you know, he he speaks the truth. Um, he really, really, truly does. So, um, you know, I hope that everybody uh, gets to gets to see that and really examines um, examines um, each candidate because everybody's vote counts. Your vote counts. It's important to go out and vote um, and to keep your to keep your um, you know your electives accountable. It's very, very important to do that. Thank you. And I wanted to open up to the, the others on the line to see if they have any last uh, remaining questions. I think we're I think we're good. And and just so you know where the questions come from, yep. the questions we actually email out to our database of a hundred thousand uh, people. No we you know get comments back from issues to them and questions they like asked. And so we kind of consolidated them all these. Category, so we really appreciate it, uh, your time. No and, uh, it's been a pleasure. You, I do want to you know, let us know uh, about events. Yeah, sure. I was going to say I do want to get back to you on the um, some um, that um, foreign policy question. I'm I'm not a foreign policy guru, but I really want to make sure you get that you get that answer. Um, uh, so just let me know. Oh, so you. I, and yeah, at the same time, you can provide uh, maybe the website for your how to get involved. Yep. What is, what is that again? Your www.martinomalley.com, and uh, please uh, check it out. Um, a lot of this that I've been talking about today is on the website. It uh, has all of our uh, all of our policies, and uh, people have called all of our policies bold and uh, transformative. And uh, definitely, you can see the new leadership in there and how we're going to move the country forward. And uh, that is that is a, a one place that we truly have have helped. Uh, the conversation, move the conversation along in this in this uh, presidential is by having these bold policies and forcing all the other candidates to do the same. Um, so there's a lot there. So um, you should check. Everybody should definitely check out the website www.martinomalley.com. Thank you. And uh, to our attendees, thank you so much for joining. U.S. Impact will uh, have you know Governor O'Malley is a Democrat. We've recently had one uh, discussions with. Uh, Republicans as well. We'll continue to engage both parties. Uh, and uh, you know, thanks everybody for joining. And, and, and thank you again for, for your time. We, we really appreciate no it. Thank you so much. It was a it was a pleasure. My pleasure. All right. Bye everybody. Bye. The session has been disconnected.